Well, shalom everyone. This is part two from Cozy Corner. My apologies for the last uh, video cutting, uh, cutting off the battery was once again exhausted. I was talking about how God is calling us up higher. And the word of God says that he has given us everything we need as blood-washed children of God to live a set-apart, pure and holy lifestyle. And only in Yeshua can we do that. And I was making reference to a sister who had said more grace. And I thought about it and I watched the video again and I thought, you know, there is a time. I mean, we are to extend grace to each other. But the law of Yeshua, when, you know, to him who has been forgiven much, much is required. You know, it does cost something to follow after the, the Lord. We've been given an anointing, which is very costly. And so we are called to set ourselves apart. What does that mean? It means that we live according to the law of Messiah, right? And Yeshua said the two most important commandments, well, one is not new, to love the neighbor to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and strength. And the second one is to love your neighbor as you would yourself. And we know that that is difficult. That is very challenging. So we're called to a higher standard. And in God, we can please God. We can live a righteous life in God. A righteous life, but with humility, not self-righteousness, which a lot of believers, we've all been guilty of. What makes me different from the guy next door who hasn't received Yeshua? The Spirit of God that lives within me because I've received Yeshua. But I am still living in this body of flesh. And as I've said many times, this body of flesh is not being transformed into anything till I go up to be with the Lord and I will be housed in a, in a different, a heavenly body, whatever that is. But here on earth, there is this holy warfare, this continual holy warfare, the battle between the flesh and the Spirit. But every day... I need to submit my fleshly nature to the spirit of God that lives within me, that loves God, my spirit to his spirit in, unit, in unity. Hallelujah. So God is calling us up higher, and he wants us to be able to see like with a bird's eye view so that we are, our spirits are being elevated, so to speak. You know, we all know, there are people that we love being with because it's like our hearts leap when we see each other because Yeshua is at the center of our relationship and our unity and our passion and our love for him is what we share and it's very exciting. It is life-giving. And then we also know that we can be with people who are always complaining. They don't talk about the Lord. Um, they want the focus to be on them. It's like you want to focus on God and they want to focus on them and their issues. That is a divisive spirit. We all know we've been around people who bring our spirit down. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't talk to each other as trusted friends. Of course we do. And I often make reference to the scripture in James. Confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. I absolutely love that. You talk with a trusted friend or family member and you share your hearts and then you pray together and it is so life-giving. It's wonderful. It's like the scriptures in action. You know, talk about... Um, you know, we don't live the word here. We need to live it out in our lives to appropriate the word to our lives. So it's it's like food. And we're eating the word every day and we're practicing the word. Hallelujah. So these scriptures are, they're food. They're food to our spirit. So we know we can be with people who are life-giving and we can be with those who bring our spirit down, who want to take the attention off of the glory of God and bring it on to themselves. And that can be very, very draining. And so God wants us to focus on him. And we do talk to each other about our struggles. Absolutely, we need to do that. And I think that's a place where many churches have fallen short. They don't make that opportunity to talking one to each other. I mean, I, they do encourage friendships. Of course, there are wonderful churches, right, that are emotionally healthy churches. But then there are those, many of those, I think, that are not. And so we need to get 
friends and family, people who are trustworthy that we can pour our hearts out to. But it's not for the sake of gossip or slander. Absolutely not. And that's what I was addressing the other day. The Lord does not want us to be thinking bad thoughts about people and speaking bad thoughts about people. Both are not his heart and both grieve his heart when we partake of those things, when we engage in. Because we can curse people with our thoughts and and actually, as I said yesterday, it boomerangs back. We reap what we sow. If I speak badly about somebody, what do you think is going to happen? I'm cursing myself. It's coming back on me. It's going to bite me in the bupkis. Absolutely. Yeshua said, take the plank out of your own eye before you tell your neighbor about the splinter in their eye. God is the only judge. Yes, we're called to judge rightly for our lives, but we're not called to be the judge of anybody else's life. So God is calling us up higher and we are not to water down the holiness and purity of the walk we are called to and dance in God we are called to. Absolutely not. We need to exhort each other with the, these things. Now, we know that no one is perfect but God. And we know that we needed a Savior yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's not like I received Yeshua and now I'm good. I'm good in that he is my once and for all final atonement. His blood cleanses me. I must repent of my sin, turn away from my sin, and follow after him. But I know because I live in this body, I'm going to sin, not because I want to. No, absolutely not. Once upon a time, I did not have a sin awareness. I did not have Holy Spirit living in me. And I, I, I didn't have a morality because I didn't have the Holy Spirit to judge rightly from my life. Yeshua said the Holy Spirit will come and indwell you and remind you of all the things that I've said to you to lead and guide you into all truth. Show more grace, the comment more grace, sister, is not appropriate when we talk about these things. If you're treating somebody, if, if somebody is crying out mercy, mercy, and you don't give them mercy, more grace is appropriate. But we, but we don't water down the gospel of Yeshua the Messiah. We speak the word of God. We are being called up higher. And God wants us to live elevated, so to speak, in the spirit realm. Yes, we are flesh and we are in this temporal world. But that's actually not who we really are. We are housed in this body. We're a spirit housed in this body. But God wants us to see from a bird's eye view so that the enemy doesn't use us as a pawn. You know, I was sharing with uh, a friend the other day, what really breaks my heart is a lot of people think if they come to Yeshua, if they put their faith in Yeshua, they'll no longer be free. But that's the great deception. They think they're free because they're not serving God. They're serving their flesh. And we know they're not free because the enemy is the one who is a magnet to their, our sin. Sin and the enemy is like, it's a magnet. So we're actually serving Satan himself. When we live to satisfy and gratify the desires of this fleshly nature, we are exactly where the enemy wants us. We're actually serving the devil and we don't know it because the devil and sin go together. Dafka, we say in Hebrew, the perfect example, bullseye. That is the truth. And so it breaks my heart because we're not free when we're not serving God. We become free when we put our, put our faith in Yeshua, in Jesus, God's salvation. That's the truth. The Bible says that without God, we're headed for hell. And I don't preach fire and brimstone, but, but this is the word of God. God loves us so much that he gave up his one and only son, Yeshua the Messiah, which means God's salvation. And he says, whoever should put his trust in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. He loves us so much, but our sin can't go to heaven. So Yeshua is our once and for all final atonement. He went to that tree of sacrifice, that execution stake, instead of me. He went instead of me. He took up all my sin. He became a curse on that tree for me because the law said that anybody who dies that way on the tree is a curse so he he took up my curse he became a curse for me 
so that I could live freely now. I've been given a new slate, a new lease on life. Now my life can please God, and now I can come into everything that God has for me. And so who I am in the flesh is not who, who Leora really is. Who I am in God is who I really was meant to be. The sinful flesh corrupted who I was supposed to be. And we know that started in the garden. Adam and Eve were given everything, and God was very clear what they could eat and what they could not eat. And the devil came in the form of a serpent, and he tempted them, and he caused doubt. He put the seed of doubt to doubt what they knew God had said. Right? People want to blame Eve, but you know what? If man is supposed to be the head, man did not prevent her from doing that. If, God, if man is supposed to be a woman's covering, well, then he failed. They're a couple, right? It says that when, when man and woman is joined together, they are one. So it's all a matter of how you want to see it. But for the purpose of what I am saying is that the enemy came with the seed of doubt. And man was deceived. And so just as I always say rejection is an assignment from the pit of hell, so is doubt. You know how you're so sure you're to do something and step out and you do it and then suddenly doubt comes. Oh my God, what did I do? You were sure when you did it, right? Because doubt came. Doubt, doubt is not truth. Doubt is not truth. Doubt is an assignment from the pit. Oswald Chambers said something so strong in his devotional, um, his utmost for my highest. My utmost for his highest. It's either one. It's, it's a hard one to remember, but it's awesome. And I'll never forget this passage. He said, if you make a decision with God, you decide something with God, but then you go and you ask for counsel about that very thing you decided with God, that's of the devil. Now, that's a very strong statement to make, but think about it. If you and God as partners have decided something together, and then you abandon that and you go and you ask man, what does he think you should do? That is the spirit of confusion. And I was doing an outreach one day at Yamin Moshe a few years ago. On the feast we go and we dance and we invite the Israelis and it's a wonderful time. And they get, get to witness the joy we have in the Lord Yeshua. And it's, it's so awesome. You know, Max Lucado said, share the gospel and if you have to, use words. So in this case, the joy they experience uh, in the dance with other believers really leads them if they're ripe if god has them ready they ask questions and they love being with us and they come back and so i was going to tell you a story okay so this couple came that i met for the first time and they shared their believers that god led them to go to iraq this was some years ago and they knew it god had spoken they knew it it was in their heart but they then went to their friends and shared with their friends and their friends told them not to go. Because in the natural, oh my God, you're going to die, blah, 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 blah. Good thing they didn't listen. And they went. They listened to God. And it was the most amazing, amazing time that they'll never forget. Who do we follow? We follow God and not man. I don't care if a million people tell you, child of God, that you are to do something. If the spirit of the living God that lives and breathes within you, that Jesus promised would lead and guide you into all truth and remind you of all the things that he said. If you don't have a witness from Holy Spirit, you cannot move out with that which everyone is telling you to do. We're not here to be popular. We're not here to be famous. We're famous with God. We're his favorite. So, food for thought. So much love, and God bless you from the city of the great king, and keep pressing on with the Lord, and let's run the race. And, and to the end, in Yeshua's name, amen.